Um, so first off, I just want to kind of give Mike a shout out. I think, you know, I, I was with the Bisons for two years, and, and this is my second year with the Westman. And, you know, every day Mike's pushing me to get better, uh, holding me accountable, but at the same time, you know, making me feel appreciated every single day. So I think that's just a good lesson to head coaches. If you do have people helping you out, um, to really make them feel appreciated because every day I'm motivated and I'm and ready to help our guys get better. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is just leadership and coaching. Um, and then we'll kind of get into philosophy in terms of player development. And then we'll get into um, some drills that we use like every day. So to start, I think you have three fundamental responsibilities um, that you have to make sure you take care of every day as a leader. Number one, you have to be able to lead yourself. For me, I have to go through a routine every single day to get me ready to coach. You know, for me, it's meditation and yoga. I need to be ready to coach because I think so many times, if we're not ready mentally, um, we could say the wrong thing or we're just gonna, you know, there could be an opportunity to make that player better, we're just not ready. Um, the second thing I think you have to do is you have to manage conflict. Um, you're gonna have highs and lows and you gotta stay present. You're gonna have good days where you feel great, practice is going well, and then you're gonna have bad days. Kids just aren't ready to play. Um, so you have to be able to work through that. The third thing, is you, and, and what we're gonna be talking about today, is getting the most out of your people or your players. Um, and and these, are the, these are a couple things that I try to do every day when I come to practice, um, when I'm doing skill development. Um, so these are the three. Number one, you have to empower. You have to empower your players, you have to give them choice, you have to give them freedom, responsibility, you have to make them feel appreciated. Um, one of the first questions I'll ask when I come to the gym and I'm working with a player is, um, what do you want to do today? And maybe I'll, I'll text them the night before. I'm trying to get buy-in. Um, as soon as I ask him and he says, I want to do ball handling today, we may do 10, 10 minutes of ball handling and I know I got him for the whole workout. He's gonna give me everything he has. Okay, um, the, the second thing I think is really important, and I just started doing this with my basketball camps more and more, is I try to facilitate. I try to ask questions. I don't want to tell them, all, I don't want to tell them the, the answer all the time. I think when we just tell them 100% of the time, it's, it's really on the surface. It doesn't really sink in. Um, and the third thing is I think we have to encourage the athlete. We have to encourage failure. We have to encourage creativity like every single day. They have to take chances. Um, because that's really the only way they're going to get better. Okay, um, now in terms of our workouts, what they look like, how we start, they're challenging, they're fun, they're engaging. So if the player really wants to do ball handling, we may start with ball handling and I'll, and I'll try to make it difficult where it's challenging for them. Um, and then once they're warm, if it's a small group, we almost immediately go into play. So we'll show today two on two, three on three, all these type of games that we use. And the other thing is, if, if it's an individual workout, and I don't, I prefer a small group, but for individual, it's usually just getting up game, sh uh, game shots at game speed uh, from game spots. Um, and the reason, I'll tell you why, I, I'm not really a big fan of um, individual workouts. I'd, I'd prefer small, workout, uh, small group workouts. Um, because I think y y you're really limited to what you can work on. I think you can work on technique. I think you can work on confidence. Um, I think you can work on cardio, light movement. Um, and an example for me, just in terms of light movement, if we're halfway through the year and a guy's just come off, you know, he's, he's logging heavy minutes and, and he's been off for two days, that day we may just get him for 15 minutes, just get him moving and then ready for practice that same day. Okay? Um, now, I need Nye, could you get up, come out here for a second? And then you need a ball. Get the ball. Perfect. It's gonna stand right here. Okay, so this is probably the main point, uh, the whole premise of the talk is understanding difficulty and understanding complexity in, in working out. So an another reason why I don't like doing the individuals is I think you can only really gauge difficulty. With small group, you can gauge complexity. Now, I'll show you what I mean. So, Naya, just, just dribble the ball either hand. Yeah. So, just dribble the ball. Perfect. Perfect. Good. 
Good, that's good. Okay, so the task is dribbling, okay? I can make this easier or I can make it harder. Right now, she's pretty comfortable. She's successful every time she bounces it. Okay, so to make it harder, what could I do? How could I add difficulty? Well, do you have a second ball? Perfect. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. And maybe get a, a stance, maybe. Good. Perfect. Good. Perfect. So it's a little bit harder. I can make it ho maybe more harder. Maybe I can add a third ball, or maybe I can get her on the move. Or maybe I can get her changing speed and changing direction. I'm making it more difficult. Um, but this is a difference. So if I want to add complexity, what could I do? Well, give me one ball. Perfect. I need one person to stand up. Perfect. Okay. So all you're going to be responsible for is you just got to keep the ball. You can't, she can't take the ball away from her, from you. At the same time, you're trying to take the ball away from her. Okay. Ready? Go ahead. Perfect, good, that's good. Okay, so again, I've added a, a defender, so I'm making this more, diff uh, more complex. I, what I could do is maybe I add another defender. The big thing is, no, you're, you're good. What we're trying to do is, in terms of complexity, and why I'm trying to make it more complex is because what, what's the game of basketball? Think about how many different variables there are in a game. Is there ever a point where she's just gonna be dribbling the ball on the spot? in a game and just concentrated on dribbling. It's not. So what I'm saying is, is we, to make it more like the game, we have to add complexity. So I've added a, a defender. What else could I do? Well, I could do this. You could be here. Perfect. The same thing. Okay. You're guarding her. Okay. And all you're going to try to do is get from half to the baseline. You're doing the same thing. You're just trying to take the ball away from her. Okay? We got it? Go ahead. Good. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Right there. Okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to try to get to half court, okay, in five seconds. Okay? Same thing. In five seconds. So again, I'm adding complexity. I'm adding a clock now to what she's trying to do. Ready? Go ahead. Five, four, three, two, one, perfect. Stay at half, that's good. Okay, now we're gonna go this way. Okay, not only do I have a clock, now you gotta, you gotta get the bucket. You gotta get right to the bucket and score. Okay, ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one. That's all right, okay, good. Okay, so as I do this, as, as I add complexity, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, gauging, I'm gauging complexity. Um, one of the books that I love is um, called The Little Book of Talent by Daniel Coyle, and he talks about the sweet spot. The sweet spot is 50 to 80% of your success rate. So if she's in that zone or that, that range, that's perfect because she's going to maximize the growth she can make. If she's too far below, it's too low. If it's too high, it's too easy, or too, sorry, too complex, it's no good. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Okay, and this is another point. And you, you guys are good. You guys can come back. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, now, the other thing I want to talk about in terms of difficulty and complexity, and this is what, for me, when I started, I didn't understand this, is I think the best coaches make the game simple. What happens is coaches try to simplify the game. They try to simpl simplify complex concepts. And what I mean is they dumb it down. So I, I've, I've given you variables. We added variables. We added defenders. We added time. We, we continue to build. Maybe we add bodies, so maybe there's less time and space. Maybe it becomes three on three, okay? Um, but they simplify the game. So we'll, they, they dumb it down to the point where the, the work becomes, you know, it's not purposeful. And the one thing I'll say with that is that if you're in the initial stage of learning uh, with a player, I get it. We're going to do more acqu acquisition block practice and we'll build that way, where it's maybe one on O, two on O, three on O, we'll build it that way. Um, so at the beginning, maybe you're just gauging difficulty, um, you know, easy or hard, okay? Does that make sense? Did I explain that okay? We get that? Okay. Um, so let's, let's do this. Let's get, how many basketballs do we have here? Okay, okay that's fine. So let's, 
if you can, everybody who has a ball to get in the baseline. That's perfect. Okay, so that, that's kind of my philosophy and how I think about it. Uh, throughout it, I'm just, I'm really just gauging complexity and trying to find where, guy, where, where, the, where the sweet spot is with guys when I'm working them out. Okay, so yeah, on the baseline, we'll just spread out. Okay, yep. Okay, so one of the things that I learned at the University of Winnipeg, I was in a dance class and I was the only male with like 25 other females. And it was, you know, really awkward because I, I just don't do that stuff. But I thought, you know, I don't want to say this too loudly, I thought that could be, you know, a GPA booster for me. So that's why I took the class. Anyway, I took, I'm not a great student. So I took the class. I ended up getting an A plus in the class. I worked really hard. I was dancing every single day, um, trying to get better. But one of the things I learned at the beginning is they were teaching basic movement. They were teaching um, galloping. Just like this. And I had no idea. I couldn't do it at all. I had no idea. And I just had, I had poor movement education as, as I was growing up. So one of the things I'll do, and we'll do this with the university players, we'll do it with, you know, when I, when I coach high school, or just with young kids, and we'll do, we'll, we'll incorporate movement education into our ball handling warm-up. Okay? And again, it's challenging, it's fun, it's a little different. So you guys need to spread out just a little bit more. Okay. And just quick, the one thing I want to, and I learned this from my motor learning class this past year, um, when you're teaching someone how to dribble, a lot of times we focus on what? We focus on the vision, on peripherals. What I learned from that class is you also can use your audio, uh, your hearing, so you can listen to the bounce. It's, it's really important to pick up on cues. Another thing that we'll do with just some of the guys when, we're, when they're in working out, and this is kind of off topic, but if we're doing any ball screen offense, so many times as coaches we focus on reading the coverage. So I'll, I'll just do this really quick. I know I'm off. Yep. And let's get two more people out. Perfect. And I'm just, I just want to show this really quick in terms of why it's important to... So you guard her. Perfect. Yep, you come here. And one more, sorry. One more. Okay, okay. Perfect. And actually I'll get two, actually two more people just in the corner over there. I'm sorry. Okay, good. So in terms of, you know, listening. So we did this with our bigs and it, to, to de de uh, develop more rhythm, okay, with the skipping. But what I'm saying is we can also use uh, hearing when we're playing. And this is one of the things we used. So if you set a ball screen, okay, and you're going to hard show, okay, and you're coming off this thing. A lot of the time we're focused on what? What are you focused on? Right. So you're... you're you're trying to watch what she's going to do. What, what type of coverage is this? Maybe she's in the gap like this, or maybe she's being aggressive and she's coming out. Perfect. But if you focus more on maybe what she's saying, maybe if we knew black meant hard show, maybe you knew, so you're in help defense. Perfect. And you're in the corner. And as you roll, so we roll, Naya, because you know it's a black, you know it's a hard show, you know that someone's going to have to come over. So as you create space, you can get back downhill and make this pass to the corner. Okay, so we're using our, we're, we're, we're using our hearing. Okay, so that, I think that's an important uh, point when we coach. It's, I think it's underutilized. So that's good. So let's get you guys off. Okay, I was off topic. Okay, so what, what we're going to do in terms of movement education, um, and just a, a great way to get people warm, we're going to go right hand skip, and we're going to go all the way to that baseline. So right hand skip, head up, chest up. And at the same time, now hold up, I want you to listen to the bounce. Listen to the bounce if, you, if we can. Just like this. Okay, we got it? Let's go. Head up, chest up, and listen to the bounce. Good, now you're gonna come back with your left hand. Again, listen to the bounce, get the rhythm, get the rhythm. So again, when we start a workout, it's gonna be mainly focused on rhythm and movement to get them loose and get them ready to go. Okay, good, now you're gonna go between the legs skip. The same thing with between the legs. Okay, we got it. Let's go. So here. Perfect. Good. That's it. Keep skipping. Between. Good. Get the rhythm. Be loose. Good. Good. And no. And hold up. This is good. Okay, and as we do it, I, I didn't demo it. I did a poor job. As we do it, 
We want to be smooth. We don't want any extra bounces in between. We got it? Let's go one more time that way. Let's go. Okay, head up, chest up. Get the rhythm. Perfect. And one of the things I did with this in the summertime, again, working on rhythm, I had, I started clapping. So I tried to get our professional guys and our university guys to work off the clap, again, to make it more difficult, like I talked about before. Okay, now we're gonna try going back backwards. Okay, so between the legs, backwards. Okay, ready, go ahead. Skip, keep skipping, good, good. Get the rhythm. Again, movement, coordination, rhythm. Perfect, that's good. You guys are doing really good. Good. Bang. Head up, keep your head up, good. Okay, that's good. Now we'll try going reverse between. So we'll go reverse between. Okay, we got it, ready, let's go. Good, head up, chest up. Oh, hold up, you gotta go this way. Yes. Good. Keep skipping. Perfect. Okay. Um, another one, and again, you can mess with it. You could do galloping. You could do whichever one you want. Just, just to mess with and continue to challenge them. But another one that we do a lot is we'll go bounce to a wrap. So we'll, we'll bounce it. We'll wrap it behind. We'll bounce it. We'll wrap it behind. Bounce it. Wrap it behind. We got it? Okay. This way. Let's try. Good again to add difficulty. Maybe I make them go backwards. Perfect. Head up, chest up. Good. Lefty. Good. Keep skipping. Good. Get the rhythm. Again, listen to the bounce. Listen to the bounce. Once we get it, try to listen to the bounce. Okay. Last one. Let's see if we can just try to do this to half. Okay. We're going to go behind here. Okay. And now we're going to go in front. Behind, in front. Behind, in front. You got it? Okay. Let's go. Try to half. Just to half. Let's see. Okay, that's perfect. And, and you girls can sit down. That's perfect. And maybe give them a round of applause. Okay, so again, so how we start the workout, it's going to be challenging, um, engaging, and we try to keep it fun. Um, the other thing, just thoughts on shooting really quick. Okay. I think we talk about how complex the game is. I think shooting is more than just just reps and technique. I think we just work reps and technique over and over again. And don't get me wrong, like I mentioned before, I think you can work confidence and I think that's important. Um, but when you think about it, there's a lot more to shooting. Okay, it could be the quality of the pass. Okay, it could be, you know, that person measuring distance. It could be, um, could be measuring distance. It could be just, like I said, the quality of the pass. It could be just time and score. That, for that player, that's just not a good shot at that time. So again, I think there's more than shooting. I think there's more uh, psychological uh, to shooting than anything else than just getting reps and reps and reps, okay? Um, now, the, a couple things that we emphasize a lot, um, we, we try to emphasize every day, is just being on balance, okay? Shooting with rhythm, okay? Shooting on the way up, so not shooting, hanging, and trying to hit, we're up and we're shooting, okay? Um, and the other thing which I think is really important that I, I did early on, when I used to teach shooting, I was really technical in everything I did. So I'd talk about how the elbow had to be here, the feet had to be here, your release had to be, they say, uh, what is it, eyebrow, uh, elbow, the eyebrow. I was really technical. And what I found is, especially with some people, because I, I mean, everybody's different, but with some of the athletes I was working with, they became really choppy. They had like an internal focus and they were focusing so much on their elbow that it was just breaking all rhythm that they had and all rhythm that we developed. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, 
Um, so I think that's important. This is what I want to do. So maybe let's get some different girls out, okay, and everybody with a basketball. So I just want to show you right now some of the drills that we'll work on, uh, that we'll do to work on balance and, and, and rhythm. Okay, perfect. And actually, let's do this. Let's go ball and a partner. So we can even have more girls involved. Ball and a partner. Perfect. Okay, so we're, we're just going to be on this basket. We'll have the person who's going to be rebounding. So if you don't have a ball, you're going to be underneath. Okay, the person who's shooting about 12, 15 feet out. Okay, where we're comfortable. Okay, just to start. Perfect. So, again, I just want to kind of show you a series that we do um, with our players to develop rhythm and balance um, and coordination. Okay, so the first one I want to show you, we're just going to go front to back. So we're going to go here, front, back, shot. We got that? Front, back, shot, and drive your feet. You guys see that? Front, back, drive your feet. And getting that sensation of the pads of your feet digging into the ground is really important. Okay? So we got it. Front, back. This is what's going to happen. We'll take like three or four shots, and then we'll flip people. Okay? Let's go. Front, back, drive your feet. Good. Good. It's all right. Good. And, and I prefer if we can get to a new spot every time we shoot. A different distance, maybe. Perfect. Front, back, shot. Good. Good. Yep. After you know three, four reps, we'll switch. Front, back, drive. Good. Front, back, drive. Good. Back. Okay, that's good. Let's hold up. Now, now we'll go. Now we'll go reverse. This, it's good. This is good. Okay, we'll go, what was it? We went front back. Now we're going to go back front. So we'll go back, front, again, driving our feet and shooting. Okay, let's go. Front, back. Good. So if the, if the player wasn't in a, an acquisition phase where they're just not learning shooting, like a lot of these guys that we have, they've been playing the, the game for 10 years. Um, we do this kind of stuff and we try to get them on the move. Again, this is something we may do just to get them warm. You're all right, you're all right. Okay, that's good, okay? And I think you guys get the point. The next one we'll do is a big lateral hop. So a big lateral hop, big, and then small again, driving your feet into the ground. I'll show it again. So we're big, small, drive your feet. Big, small, drive your feet into the ground, okay? Let's go. Big, quick hop, good. Big, drive your feet. Good, perfect, okay, that's good. Okay, the next one we'll do, okay, we'll be here, we'll scissor our feet, so we'll go one, two, drive, shot. One, two, drive, shot. Sorry, you're all right. So off a hop, perfect. Two, drive, hop. One, two, drive, hop. Okay, that's good. Now what we'll do is we'll add the bounce. So we'll go between, between, drive your feet, shot. Okay, ready? Go ahead. So now we're, we're also working on ball pickup. One, two, drive. Again, so we, we, right now we'd be making, we'd be increasing the difficulty. That's what we're doing right now. We're shooting. OK, 
Okay, that's good. Okay, girls, that's good. So the, la uh, the second last one we're going to do, real quick. Ball here. Perfect. We're going to go one foot to two foot. So we're going to plant. We're going to drive our feet on the pads of our feet. Plant. Get back on two and shoot. Okay, just like how we do a step back. We plant. Get back on two. Okay, we see it? Let's go. Yeah, it's the same thing. So plant. So I'll, I'll show it. That's my fault. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, shot. Oh, good. We see it? One, two, drive your feet. Okay, let's go. One, two. And try to create space. We want to try to create space with that first. Perfect. That's much better. One, two. Again, as we get comfortable with the movement, then we may add the bounce. Good. And it's important right now, going back on two feet, that we're on balance. We go one foot and we get right back on balance and we shoot. Okay, okay last one. So I started watching uh, Dirk Nowitzki's uh, coach. I think there's a, a Vice story on him. It's about 15 minutes long. Um, and I try to you know, start studying him. My buddies in Los Angeles do uh, pre-draft. So they got in touch somehow with one of Dirk's guys. Um, and this is something they did. And I found it unbelievable uh, for our guys in terms of developing rhythm. And essentially what we're doing is we're, we're practicing fadeaways. Um, but as, you, as we practice fadeaways, we found it just smooth, smooths uh, the rhythm. If there's a chink in the armor where they get here and they shoot, this kind of smooths it out. So this is one of the things that we did. And again, I got this from uh, my buddies, uh, Charlie Torres and uh, Shay Frazee. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go one to two on, on one feet. So we're going to go here, one, two, and then we're going to kick with the same leg and, and fade back. One, two, kick. Okay, let's go again. And then if we go right, left, if I go right, left, I'm going to elevate and kick with this foot. And it's going to feel real weird. So I'm going to go, so right, left, kick. Okay. We see it? It's, it's really weird. Okay, let's try it. Let's see. Again, it's going to be really weird and awkward in terms of how we move. We may have to move in just a little bit just so we can get it there. Good, let's keep... Good. So again, coaches, it's, we're here. We're going one, two. We're going to elevate and kick back. If I go right, left, right, left, kick, okay? Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna do. This is good. Again, it's awkward, uh, we're just trying different things. Um, here's what we're gonna do. I want one person here, okay? You don't need a ball, perfect. You're gonna be here. Perfect, and the rest of you girls are great. You can sit down. Perfect. Okay, you're having the ball. Okay, uh, I, I forgot if I mentioned them or not, because some of these concepts uh, I've, I've taken um, from an outstanding author named uh, Brian McCormick. Uh, he, he's written two good books. I just want to, two great books that I just want to mention real quick, because some of these things we're taking in terms of difficulty and complexity, um, these are things that he talks about. The first book, and I don't care if you just coached one year or if you've coached 30 years, I think these are important. Um, the 21st century basketball practice and a 21st century guide to individual skill development I think are huge. So I think those are worth uh, writing down. So at the beginning we talked about difficulty and complexity and the one thing Brian says a lot is he says, you know, if your only decision is to shoot, it's, it's not a game shot because again, there's multiple variables happening at the same time. So this is a drill I'll do um, with our players. Um, again, trying to get them game shots, get game reps. And again, it's not perfect. It's not a game, so it's not necessarily a game, uh, a game shot. But we, we do uh, the best we can. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to like underhand scoop a tour. Okay, and I'll back off show. Well, underhand scoop a tour, and you're going to give her a read. Can you, first of all, can you shoot from there? Three? Okay, that's fine. That's good. Okay, so she's going to toss it out, and you're going to give a clear read. You're either going to like run her off the line, like hands high, you're here, 
and you're just going to rip and take one dribble, maybe two bounces, and shoot. Or, okay, you're going to close out short, hands down, and you've got to be ready to shoot. Okay, that's all we're doing. Ready? And what we'll do is after you shoot, we'll flip every single time. Okay? Good. And you'll get your rebound. You'll get your rebound. Perfect. And we'll flip. Good. Here we go. Oh, that's okay. Good. Perfect. Good. Here we go. Good. Good. Okay, and again, try to get to a different spot if we can. Perfect. Up. Good. Last one. Perfect. Okay. So again, we've talked about complexity. Let's bring it out. Good. So here's what's going to happen. On the air time of this pass, so you, air time of this pass, freeze. I'll either put my hands up like this, okay, or I'll, I'll just leave them down. If I put my hands up, you got to make the extra pass just like in drive and kick. Perfect. I'm going to drive it right at you. You've got a space. You're going to stunt. So you're going to take one step with your inside, hand, uh, inside foot, inside hand, and then you've got to recover and get here, and this is live. Okay, we're just playing live. Okay, ready? Yeah, you just make that read, okay? Good. That's right. So again, it, if, hold up. This is all right. If, if my hands get put up, if my hands get put up, then we play, okay? Ready? Yep. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, and we can flip, right? We're flipping, right? Just like we did before, perfect. Okay. All right. So ideally what we're trying to do, especially when we get into drive and kick, and I'll show that in a second, we got to make sure we scan. So before you get it, you got to use your peripherals, the corner of your eye, and see if you can, okay? Ready? Okay, here we go. Perfect. I'm going to drive it. We're playing. Close out. And perfect. Good. Good. Let's, let's flip it. Let's go. Next rep. Perfect. Hand up. Good. Perfect. So hold up again. So one stunt. You'll take one stunt. You're here, and then you got to close out. Okay, last one here. You gotta move on. Okay, ready? Good. Good. Stunt. Stunt. Now get back. Get back. Get back. Gotta play. Good. Good. That's all right. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, moving on. And that's good. Um, so maybe give him another round of applause. That's good. Okay. Okay. So I need. Um, and, and again, if we're thinking complexity, so that may have been too hard or too too complex. I'd probably just stay there. But what, what you could do is maybe we put a rim protector underneath and, at, and, and as you close out, they're just protecting the rim and they can't leave the paint. So essentially it becomes a one-on-two drill. Okay? Um, what we'll do is we'll get two girls out, two new, new girls. Perfect. Maybe two guards, sorry, two guards. That's all right. Okay, perfect. Sorry, good. Okay, good. So here's a game I got from... Uh, Ross McMains again, Charlie Torres, uh, Shea Frazee. Um, all that's going to happen is this. We're working on pick and roll. Um, just so you can see it. Naya, can you get out, out here for a second? Okay. Talking pick and roll. So if it was a softer coverage and you're like in the gap, yeah, perfect. Or they go under, just the big's not coming up and showing. This is, essentially, this is what we're working on, so that's good, Naya. Okay, so, so here's the rule. I just want to show so they, they got the idea. No, you're good. That's good. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right. So what's going to happen is you're going to call me over to set a pick and roll. Okay, perfect. You have, there's three things that can happen. If you reject the pick and roll, so you go away from the pick and roll, you can do anything you want. You can go right to the rim or you can take the pull up, anything you want. Okay, if I set it, okay, and you go underneath, okay, you can either turn the corner, you can pull up right here, okay, or you can call for a rescreen, and I'm going to come back and set this one, and then you can come back and turn the corner.
Okay? The only exception is, okay, is if she goes over, over top, free, stop, hold up. Okay? You can't score in the paint. Okay? So you're probably going to get her on, on your back and maybe you take this one. Okay? Or I set it and you're going to snake it out and get to free space and take this shot. Does that make sense? Okay. Ready? Okay. What do you got to do? Good. Call me over. I'm setting it. Good. Good. That's all right. Okay, let's flip over. It's okay. Let's just try it out. Ready? Here we go. Good. I'm setting it. Under. Shot. That's okay. Don't worry. Hey, again, like I said from the beginning, we want to make mistakes. That's a, I'll, I'll say this really quick. Really quick. It, it's going to be chaotic. It's not going to look very pretty, and we're gauging complexity. It's fine. You guys are going to make mistakes. We just got to work through that, okay? Ready? Good. It's coming. Good. Setting it. Good. It's screened over top. Good. Flip it. Let's go. Flip it. Right away. Let's go. Good. Here I come. Good. Screen in. Wait on it. She goes under. Good. That's all right. Good. Next rep. Next rep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Here I come. Good. I'm setting it. Rejects it. Makes a play. That's fine. That's good. That's okay. Okay. So I hope we get the idea. Um, are we good in the rules of the game? We're okay? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Um, next one, we're talking about the down screen. So we'll do the same thing. I need nine, maybe you come out, or one of you girls, doesn't matter. One of you girls to come out. Okay. Um, ball's going to be over here. Okay. Perfect. So we're working off floppy or some type of down screen action in here. Okay. So real simple. Okay. You're going to be head under rim, so who, who, whoever's on offense is going to be underneath, and we're going to be matched up, okay? Perfect. What's going to happen is I'm going to set a down screen, okay? And now maybe you can, like, shorten this pass and be up, up top here. Perfect. Yeah, because we're going to be setting it here. Good. So you're coming. Perfect. Good. I'm going to give you two reads to start, okay? So let's back this up, okay? As you use it, if she gaps it, so she's shooting the gap, Yes, perfect. You got to fade out. Good. Let's back it up. Okay, if she tails and she stays attached, okay, your rule is now you got to go to the elbow. Okay? And you only have one dribble. Okay, do we see it? Okay. Let's go. Ready? Good. Good. Wait on it. That's all right. Wait on it. It's okay. Ready? Here we go. Jump stop. Good play. Shot. Good. Next. Let's go. Next. 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 Throw it out. Good. Ready? Here we go. Jump stop, man. Good. Let's do it again. Okay, ready? Wait on it. You gotta wait on it. Wait on it. Let's clean it up. Wait on it. Perfect. Jump stop. Good. Okay, one more. Good. Ready? Here we go. We fade back. We gotta play. Okay, good. And that's my fault. Maybe I'll, I'll do two or three dribbles. We get it? So again, and this is why I love it so much, and this is why I think Mike does such a great job, um, because in practice, we're constantly playing against live defenders, and we can easily correct it. So a couple things we could have cleaned up, okay? And maybe I, I try to facilitate and ask them, but maybe she's got to make sure that she comes off shoulder hip and then makes this, this defender make a, so she has to make a clear read. She's either going to shoot the gap or she's going to tail it. Does that make sense? So little things you can clean up through play. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to increase the complexity. Um, let's do this. Naya, you're going to be here. Okay. And again, we'll just try this out. Okay. You're going to go screen. Okay. The same thing's going to happen. You're going to make your read. Okay. And as it happens, so you make your read. Okay. You got to get through, right? You got to go, go guard. Naya, you're going to become the rim protector. So now it becomes a one-on-two drill. Okay, ready? Here we are. Okay. Okay, let's go. Good. Play, play. Good. Next, a nice shot. Let's go. Next. That's really good. Okay, and then we can ro maybe we can rotate, right? You can rotate. So you can move down and we move up. Perfect. Ready? Let's go. Perfect. Good. That's okay. Good. Next one. Next rep. Let's go. Like one more. Okay. Ready? Go ahead. Good. I like that. Zipper cut. Wiggle cut over top. Okay. Good. 
So again, this is what we could say. Let's back this up for a second. Let's back this up, okay? You're going to go set, set a screen like we just did? Okay, perfect. So what did I say before? We have to clean up what? What's the thing you've got to clean up as you come off? Yeah, perfect. Uh, so off, off shoulders. Where we go shoulder, probably to hip. Perfect. The other thing is, if you come off this thing, is she closing out? Yeah, so she said she's closing out. So as she catches it, can you hold it or do you got to make a quick decision? Why do you got to make a quick decision? Right, so she's not in position. There's somebody not, there's somebody, if you hold it, the defense is now set and now you really have no advantage. You're probably just going to huck something up. Okay, that's good. Okay, um, so this is running through here. Uh, with some of these games. Um, the next one we'll do, we'll do this. Um, we're there, perfect. Uh, Nye, you can be up here. Okay, perfect. So you're going to sprint over, okay, yep, and you're going to set a flare screen. Perfect. You're going to get separation, you're going to sprint off this thing. Okay, and we're going to throw it over top and we're going to play. Yeah, so you're going to take, so hold up. So as she's coming, hold up. As she's coming, she's running, you're setting it up, you're taking one step, and you're going to sprint off this thing, okay? And at the same time, as that ball goes over top, you go to chase her, and then you're protecting the rim. You can't leave the paint, okay? Or the key. Yeah, so after you screen, you become a defender, okay? Hey, let's just watch these pads here. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Set it. Good. Over top. Good. Quick decision. Good. Good. Not bad. Let's do it one more time. Same, same uh, now you do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, ready? Here we go. Good, take one step, good, play. Good, good, okay, good. One more time, okay? Okay, so here, here's the question. How do you maximize your separation coming off the screen? Like how do you get more space to play out of, out of this cut? What do you have to do? Yeah, so as she comes, you're taking your one step. Perfect. As you're running, what are you doing? You're cutting. What are you doing right now? Yeah, so you're looking at the ball. Perfect. So this is something we clean up, and we'd say, don't worry about the ball. All you got to do, you take your one step. You got to sprint off, create as much space, probably your first two, three steps. And then you're here. Let the ball find you. Okay, ready? So let's do it again. Last one. Okay, let's go. Set it. Good. Good. Now play. Good. A little bit better. Good. Now I'll ask you this. When you, when you caught it, were you open? So, yeah, shoot. Shoot the ball. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Okay. Um, again, we're just adding complexity. Something we may do, and I've done this a bunch with the older guys. We're here. Okay. As you set it, we may get stop. We may get into blind pig. So if I throw it to you, Okay, you can either give it to her, you can toss it back, and you're going to turn the corner and get to the, get to the rim one-on-one, -on -one, okay, or, okay, I throw it to her on the run, you're going to cut, you don't get it, okay, you're going to go to the corner, you're going to fill the corner, dribble handoff, dribble handoff, okay, and now again, we're attacking one-on-one -on -one at the rim, okay, so again, what I've done with it is I've add, added complexity, okay, we got it, so either you're going to set it, and I'm just going to throw it over top, or I'm going to hit you in the run, and we go into blind pig. Okay, ready? Go ahead. Perfect. Toss it, play. Good. Let's rotate, let's rotate, let's rotate. Quick, 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 let's go. Okay, yep, ready? Let's go. Where do you got to go? Good, you got to flare, fade out, and play. Good. Perfect. That's okay, that's good. So maybe, I, I, again, I, I, I take less complexity away from what we're doing right here. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, here's what I want to do. Let's get a, a, a girl here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. A girl in that corner, a girl in this corner, a girl in this corner. Quick, quick, quick. Let's go. We don't have much time. Okay. Let's get a girl on the block. Perfect. A girl on the block. Okay. A girl, another girl on the block. Perfect. And another, another girl at the nail. Perfect. Okay. So we're working on driving kick and scanning the D. So what's going to happen is we're going to get into a dribble handoff. So either way, you can go into a dribble handoff here, you're going to attack the defense, and she's going to come, okay? Or 
you're gonna get into a jewel handoff here. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So you go into a jewel handoff, either way, perfect. We're coming, good, perfect. As you come off, the rule is you gotta read the two on one. So as you come off, one dribble, perfect. Where's the two on one? She's guarding you. Perfect, you got two people here, perfect, okay. As you come off, you gotta hit the two on one. So you go to space, okay, the rule is you gotta stay outside the three, okay. You can't catch it inside the three. You throw it back to the two on one, perfect, okay. What do you gotta do? You probably gotta guard this, now you gotta rotate, perfect. Okay, so the rules are real simple. You attack the two on one to start, okay. If you drive it and you get in here and you kick it, you gotta exit cut and get outside the three, okay? And the other thing is you can never catch it inside the three, so you can't just back cut and get a catch. Okay, let's go. So we'll start, yeah, up here, or either way, yeah. Okay, dribble handoff to start. Okay, here we go. Dribble handoff, good, come off. Where's the two on one? We gotta play now. Okay, let's do it again, same group, one more time. Yeah, you're just playing, yeah, you're just playing D. You gotta go rotate to the next pass. Ready, let's go. Hand off, we come off. Where's the two on one? Good. Good, okay, this is good. So we back it up. Essentially what we're doing is we're giving the offense an advantage. We're four on three. If you think about it, if we ever trap a ball screen, we have two people on, on the ball, we've created a four on three. So what we're trying to teach our players is we have an advantage, right? We have four people versus three. If that's the case, how quickly do our passes have to be? They have to be, do we hold it? Or do we make quick passes because someone's, is someone open? There's always somebody open, no? Yeah. So you gotta make the next pass. Okay, and we're making the defense rotate. Okay, do we see that? Okay. So, again, and, and I'm not gonna show you because I don't have enough time, but what we do, again, to add the complexity, we'd have the ball here. Okay, let's say you guard here. One girl come up, quick. Perfect. You're here, I'd have the pads on. Okay, and now I'm gonna set a high ball. Or sp you're gonna come off, you, under, over top, it doesn't matter. And again, we've created a four on three. We see that? And then that's how we'd build it, okay? Um, I really want to show this. This is important because when I was at JT uh, at John Taylor Collegiate, we just won this past year. I've had a lot of those kids for the past, you know, seven years, and we've been building and trying to teach them how to play so they had the best chance to play at the next level um, in terms of decision making. And we also did this this past summer with the provincial team. Um, I, I told Nick, uh, the coach, this just like 15 minutes before this started. Because he, he, he said, you know, let's put motion in. And I said, you know, it's not motion. Uh, we're trying to teach them how to play. So we call it, at JT, we call it um, our educated freedom, okay, um, or just our basic playing principles, okay. And it really consisted of this. And I'm going to show you the drill. It's a three-on-three -three cutthroat drill. Um, but we wanted to work spacing and quality of movement. Really quick, if we can do this, we're, we're matched up four and four, okay. Maybe you can come in just a little bit. Okay, I'm actually gonna do this. Let's bunch you guys in really quick, just so we see this, okay? Even more, you guys bunch in. Okay, perfect. More, 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 good. So the four people on offense right now, quickly show me what good spacing is. What you think good spacing is. Perfect, so what, what does it look like? You guys are, what? What are you guys right now? We're, yeah, so we're outside the three-point line. That's a good reference, and we're far apart. Okay, perfect, okay? Now I'll ask you this, if we pass the ball here, okay, and you're gonna make a cut, what does a good cut look like to you? Okay, perfect, let's see you. What does a good cut look like? You're gonna make a basket cut, good, okay? Let's, let's do it again, let's do it again real quick. Let's make it harder though, let's, let's cut harder, if we can. Bam, cut, good, good. But did you look for the ball? That's okay, that's all right, let's try, let's, let's see you. Perfect, cut. Looking for the ball, perfect, all the way to the rim, okay? And then we'd probably exit. Let's back it up again. Just so you see it and you guys know what I'm talking about. If you go screen away right now, what, it, what does a good screen look like? Perfect, and you're making contact. Let's back it up. One more time, back it up, back it up. Okay, but do it, what did I, what did I say to her? What did I say you had to, what, what she had to fix? Yeah, cut harder with, good, perfect. 
Perfect. And why do you think I say to cut like that? Why do you do that? Okay. Here, here's my reasoning, okay? If you screen like that, so hold up, you're here, and say you had the ball, and you cut hard, okay, to, to screen, what do you do to your defender? Comes in. So what happens with this person with the ball? More space. So if you cut hard, you go screen, and you do it at pace, she's got more space. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's get three people here. Three people right here. Perfect. Uh, three people, like, on the free throw line. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And, and I need three people out of bounds. Okay, and we could do this with nine or 12 or, uh, you know, four and four and four. It doesn't matter. So I need, I need two more girls here. Okay, perfect. And then I need one here. Okay. And I need, so guys, I need one more here. I need, okay, perfect. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Do you guys understand what good spacing is? We just showed it to you. What's good cutting? We just showed it to you. What's good screening? We, we, you, you've seen it. So what we're going to do is we're going to play. Okay, and as we play, I'm going to ref your spacing and your cutting and screening. If it's no good, I'm going to say turnover. Okay, the, the people on offense have to throw it out to me. Okay, uh, defense is going out. We get new defense coming in. Do we see that? Okay, ready? Let's go. Good, we're cutting. Good. We're cutting. Good. Outlet, and we'll go make it, take it. We'll go make it, take it. We throw it out, make it, take it. Defense is out. We throw it out, come get it. We match up and we play. Let's go. kick. Good. Cut. Good. Get a cut. Good. Perfect. Okay. That's good. So as we go on, we could say, I mean, we're, we're cutting at pace. Maybe we're not looking for ball. So maybe I could add a rule and I'd say that's a turnover. Okay. Now I'll ask you a question. How does the quality of what we do improve? How's the quality of our cutting and just our overall space and improve? There's one thing we can do a little bit better job, and I haven't mentioned it so far. Perfect. So as you, as you what? As you, what, what's the situation where we talk? So when you're cutting, maybe you're saying what type of cut? Maybe it's a rim cut, so we're saying rim, okay? Or maybe you pass it, and what could you do? You could screen away. So how, what, how do you verbalize or what, what do you do to communicate that you're going to screen? You could say the action. Okay, what else? Yeah, you could put your hand up to, say, to tell her to wait. You could just tell her to wait on it. Okay, so let's do that. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say communication is going to be one of the rules. So spacing, quality of movement, and communication. Okay, so let's do it again. Up here. Okay, we'll match up. Okay, let's match up. Ready? Okay, here we go. Cut. Perfect. Good. Yep. We keep it. We got the bucket. Uh, you got the ball. So nice team's going to be on offense. Good. We get new defense. Perfect. Ready? Let's go. Good. Stop. No communication on the cut. Outlet. It's a turnover. We go here. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Who's got it? Let's go. Ball's in. We pass it. We're cutting. No, no communication again. Outlet, outlet, outlet. So again, if you cut, what could you say? Okay. Okay, that's fine. So, I, I, like I said before, we could say a rim cut, a basket cut. We could say what type of cut it is. Okay? Uh, one more time. Ready? Let's go. Good. Good. Perfect. Okay, so, essentially... What I, want to trade, uh, what I want to create with this, three on three, and you girls are done. That's perfect. You can sit down. I, really quick, just talking about our playing principles. Okay? Um, in terms of three on three, we could also do that in four on four. Again, less, bo uh, less bodies, less time and space. That's why we may start with three on three. But here's my mistake. We did this with the provincial team, and I made a, a, a bad mistake. I had the John Taylor kids for, for seven years, and 
they had a pretty good understanding. So we had kids that knew what they were doing and they were coaching other people. With the provincial team, nobody knew what they were doing. So we'd say, okay, you got to cut, you got to screen, but they had no idea what it looked like. So one of the things I'm doing more often now is I'm trying to teach whole part whole. I think with the provincial team, I did part whole. I'm trying to do it differently now. So if I had a new group, I'd probably show video of what it actually looked like um, or maybe I have kids that already know how to do it and they're coaching each other, okay? Um, the other thing I think is important, you know, if stuff isn't going right, you know, and, and, and that I wasn't really reffing you guys, I wasn't really pushing you guys and, and making it hard, um, but the one thing we did with the provincial team a bunch and even the JT guys, and we even do this with the Westman, we may just have a team timeout and they just, we just stop it, they'd talk about it, and they'd figure it out and then we'd play again versus again me trying to come up with all the solutions and all the answers for them. Them having to think about it and say, okay, what has to improve? Okay? And the one thing you may have noticed when we did it, what, what was the action that was happening off the ball? What were we doing the most? We'd pass and do what? We'd cut or we'd set a down screen. So that shows me their overall basketball vocabulary of what type of actions they understand is not very high. So what we may do is when we may start and say, okay, this is how we're going to start the drill. We're going to make a pass, we'll set a flare. Or we'll be like a transition entry, we'll back it up, like pistol action, they come out of the corner, I throw it ahead, I come get it. Or maybe a dribble push, and we'll start it that way to continue to build um, on what they know. And where I, essentially I got this drill from is I got it from uh, Mike Dunlap out of uh, La Jolla Marymount, used to coach the Charlotte Bobcats. And he would do it... Um, as a defensive drill. So he'd give basic things like communication. Um, it could be positioning. Um, it could be, you know, moving on, moving on the air time of the pass. Okay, and he'd ref it that way. And again, what would happen is it would be more player to player accountability versus just, again, us telling them everything, trying to tell them all the solutions. They'd almost self-monitor each other. Okay. Um, that's good. So if you have any questions or you want to get in contact with me, um, about motion, uh, not motion, but educated freedom, playing principles, or any of the player development stuff, um, you can email me at Coach uh, Giesbrecht, G I E S B R E C H T, at gmail.com.